Whenever Don Hewitt spoke in front of audiences, he'd get the inevitable question, what was your favorite story on 60 Minutes? Well, he had many of them after 36 years, and he liked to relive the most memorable moments, the larger-than-life personalities, and the classic confrontations. Here are the six of us sitting around here, and it's all your fault. Mm -hmm. I, we all I, sat in a circle when Don retired in 2004 ago. and reminisced about his favorite right 60 Minutes okay. pieces. Mike, you've had a lot of great moments in television. I don't think there is one that will ever even approach. You're walking in to the lion's den of the Ayatollah Khomeini right after he took 50 Americans hostage and facing him with the fact that that he was a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Imam President Sadat of Egypt, a devoutly religious man, he calls you, Imam, forgive me, his words, not mine, a lunatic. The thing I remember most is you're getting young Ron Reagan to tell you that if it weren't for his mother... I don't think he'd be where he is. I don't think he would have gotten to where he got to. Would he be if, president? I doubt it. I doubt it. I think if left to his own devices, he might have, you know, ended up hosting unsolved mysteries on TV or something. Really? <laughs> That's the secret of this broadcast. It's the people. Yeah. It is the ability to find people who can tell their own story better than you can. And your job is to bring it out of them. Keep going, keep going. Don's talent was more instinctual than intellectual, as he once admitted to Barbara Walters. What do you think your talent has been all these years? Boy, if I knew, I'd package it. I haven't the slightest idea. I, I don't think much comes from up here. I'm not very well read. I flunked out of college. I, I think it all comes from here, and I, and I can't explain that either. I remember the day I went into his office and I said, Muhammad Ali, the most virile man on earth is a, a shell. He can't even talk anymore. That's got to be a story. He says to me, how am I going to interview him if he can't talk? I said, stupid. If he could talk, there wouldn't be a story. <laughs> the story is that he can't talk. And he didn't say much. Faked you out, out, though. He, set, he nailed you. They he... set me up. Over lunch, Ali's wife, Lonnie, told Ed that Mohammed was having flashbacks in his sleep, and she was frightened because he would throw punches. I have to get out of the bed because I know it's going to start. Uh, so when he starts, what's the next room? So he's not putting on when he starts. No, this, this actually happens. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the hard part. You have to sort of... <laughs> <laughs> Don liked the profiles of sports legends and movie stars, but the big stamp he put on 60 Minutes was his pushing us to take on controversial subjects. You killed him. I did, but it could be manslaughter, not murder. And Don wanted us to be fearless. People are sitting out there, voters, and they're saying, look, it's really pretty simple. If he's never had an extramarital affair, why doesn't he just say so? You know what I think they're saying? I think they're saying, here's a guy who's leveling with us. Do yes. you feel you look foolish? Not at over all. Over weapons of mass destruction? Not at all. There were no weapons of mass you destruction. You haven't found them. Come the, on. The weapons of, don't How say How long are you going to say that? Because I'd, I'll say it as long until we find them. And we're not beholden at anyone. And, and if and anyone I'm ever right suggested that 60 Minutes was elitist, Don became a feisty lion defending his offspring. You see, there's an exclusionary sense that the network news only deals with the intelligentsia. I consider myself as much a re regular American and a blue car American as you do. Well, I'm glad you do. I do. But those people's concerns aren't dealt with as much as they could be. Any validity to that? No validity. I, 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 I do this broadcast for cops and firemen and hard hats. And he knew that those cops and firemen and hard hats loved it when he had us going after the bad guys. Jimmy, who was the first person you killed? Mm. Frankie Nicoli. Where'd you kill him? In my house. How'd you kill him? We strangled him. <laughs> I always remember being in Philadelphia, and a guy got up and he said, why does someone who's quite obviously a crook decide to go on 60 Minutes? And Wally said, crook doesn't believe he's made it as a crook until he's been on 60 Minutes. <laughs> Come on out. You don't want to talk to me? But if they refuse to talk to 60 Minutes, Don would send us out with a hidden camera. 
We had hidden cameras with us too, and here was the view from inside. And there was the great one with Steve when when the you caught the guy with the odometers. Odometers. The <laughs> this is not exactly legal, right? It's not exactly legal, no. <laughs> it's not. You know what's back there? What's back there? Yeah. No. There's a TV camera back there. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've been uh, we've been taping this whole thing. Well, all right. The good news is, we're not cops. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> the bad news is, is we're 60 Minutes. Hi. Hi. We're from 60 Minutes. We also used the ambush interview. Ah! And Don came under criticism for it. What does that add to a piece? What is it doing there, beside, in my view at least, implying that the guy has something to hide? Well, it's more than implying he's got something to hide, it's showing he's got something to hide. But it is the only way you get to see the man about whom we are doing the story. I mean, everybody's scuttling like cockroaches around here. I don't but Don understand. came to think we were overdoing these kinds something. of stories, that they were becoming a parody of TV news. After that, he rarely gave us permission to use techniques like a hidden camera. This is 60 Minutes. Wow. It's easy to forget how much of a revolutionary Don Hewitt was. When he thought up the idea of 60 Minutes in 1968, he changed the very definition of television news. Up to that point, television news was always very, very serious, very ponderous, very important. And the light stuff was Jackie Gleason, Lucille Ball, Mary Tyler Moore, and news never wanted to delve into the lighter side of life. And I figured if you put them both in the same mix, you got a winner. And it turned out to be right. I remember, Ed, you're getting Lena Horn to mm. tell you some secrets about her sex life. I'm a rich, ready, Ripe, juicy plum again. Lumber. Rich, juicy, ripe plum again. Yeah, but you can't help your sexual nature, you know. That's what that line means. <laughs> I really didn't like you back 30 years ago. Even when we went to the lighter side in terms of subject matter, Don still wanted us to bore in and ask the real shockers. Someone told us that you spent most of the 70s stoned. Who's, who was that? Uh, an ex-wife. Who said that? An ex-wife. Do you think you're immature? Oh, yeah. In what ways? Name one. Yeah, name one. Sexually? Yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm embarrassed. Huh? I am not going to talk about being sexually immature <laughs> on 60 Minutes. Somebody once said to me, would you do Britney Spears on 60 Minutes? I said, of course I'd do Britney Spears on 60 Minutes, if she had something to say. Don felt that a 60 Minutes profile was a mark of achievement, <laughs> that it meant someone had a body of work, of accomplishments worthy of our attention. You say that you're having a terrible time coming to terms with the 21st century. Yes. What's the trouble? It's not familiar to me. You know, I, 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 I'm still living Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy. <laughs> I live in another world. Yet you produce a news magazine that has to be up to date. Well, maybe having a foot in the past helps you deal with the present better. On my wall in my office, I got pictures with Reagan, Kennedy... One thing Johnson, that kept him fresh was that from time to time he would come with us on the road and take over. Bill and Hillary. Were you there Hillary. for the oh, interview? yeah. Was I there? I think at some okay. point, you're going to have to oh, yeah. be as candid as you know how. And then from there on, you say, I said it on 60 Minutes. If you want to know what I think or say on this subject, go get a tape and run it again. I've said it all. We were going to do an hour at the most, but then 40 minutes into it. Mary and Joseph. Woo. The lights Woo. fell down. Woo. All right. Woo. Woo. It was like an artillery round going off. Yeah, you all right? No, I'm all right. And then I suddenly realized that the lights had fallen off the wall and almost killed them. Boy, that was scary. Wow. But Don wanted to get on with the interview. I saw it coming. That about was the best thing you said. It was you right at that point. That was the high point of the whole oh. thing. 
Gosh. <laughs> Do you remember Don decides he's going to come with me to interview Boris Yeltsin? Yeah. We get there. He's in his tennis clothes. Yet, he says. Yet, no interview. No interview. Like that. I said, okay, I'm out of here. I'm That's walking right. away. She's going to leave. I said, go up to the tennis <laughs> court, for <laughs> Christ's sake. <laughs> Don's assuring me I'm going to get some questions off. Can you sit for one? No. 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 He doesn't want to sit. Yes. Could we just have maybe 10, 15 minutes of just Leslie just sitting, talking to him in a conversation? Now we're going to take a we'll shower. Now. Now. And then we do later, maybe? We can't talk in during oh. the shower. No, no. What about after <laughs> the shower? Every time between games, oh. Boris huffs and puffs over it to comes over to you. My wife and I, we just had two chairs. We didn't even have a table. So we had to do everything on the floor. On the floor? Really? We had to make love on the floor. That's why we got girls. <laughs> what a day. When we'd reveal something about a person, he'd praise us with his highest compliment. Wow, he'd say. I didn't know that. It's sensational. I have never had the slightest interest in an issue. I only want to get stories of people mm -hmm. dealing with issues whose lives were affected by issues, and we narrowed them down to bite size, where you could understand it and digest it. I'm Mike Wallace. Great. 60 Minutes was Don Hewitt's life. If I were going to trade jobs with anybody in the world, I trade him with Mike, and I wouldn't trade jobs with Mike. I get a better job than Mike. I'm Mike's boss. Will you do me a favor? He never burned out, never ran out of energy for the telling of stories. He simply loved what he did. You, you look back on all these things, and you can't believe that you lived through all this. When 60 Minutes returns, Andy Rooney remembers Don Hewitt.